Today we're going to talk about the number one mistake that people make when they import images into their Adobe Captivate e-learning projects. So let's get started. So I'm on my favorite uh, stock photography site. I found an image that's appropriate for my e-learning project that I'm working on. I've licensed it, I've downloaded it, and you know saved it somewhere on my desktop. And now it's time to go back to Adobe Captivate. Now, I'm going to cover both scenarios here. The first one is, uh, you know, let's say it's a blank project or a non-responsive design project. What I would typically do is uh, load this as one of my first images. This is going to be a background image. So I would take the media icon from my toolbar and uh, select image. And we'll navigate to where that image is located. And of course, when you uh, import a large image from a stock photography site, your instinct will be to probably go to the properties inspector. And with that image selected under the style tab, there is a fit to stage button. And this is a great feature, uh, but it's a little deceptive, right? Because the assumption is, is that I've resized this image. Uh, but only for the purposes of this slide. And of course, I could take it a step further and, you know, resize it so that it fits the height as well. Uh, let's just resize this so it fits the full uh, size image there. And you can tweak that a little bit with your, um, you know, your options uh, tab under the properties inspector. But the reality is, is that if I right click on this image and find the image in the library, uh, I'm uh, 4,562 kilobytes or four and a half megabytes. Still uh, seems kind of small, right? If you're used to things like, you know, thumb drives and hard drives being so large as they are today. But remember, you're going to be, uh, you know, embedding this onto an e-learning course where there may be hundreds of such images. And of course, you want to keep your e-learning project as small and easy to load over the internet or over the company internet uh, as possible. Let's take a look at uh, the similar scenario with responsive design. So if I'm doing uh, responsive design fluid boxes, I typically would put a background image on my parent level fluid box. Uh, so similar approach, but uh, we're going to use the image fill option and then import that image uh, like so. And of course, uh, you know, it would require uh, some resizing. Captivate does do a little bit of resizing here because if we go to the library panel, you'll see that the, the stock photography image has been resized, uh, but it's still quite large at 1,818 kilobytes. So let's uh, put Captivate aside for a moment and I'll take you through the uh, workflow that I use to prepare an image uh, using Photoshop, but you could certainly do similar uh, steps using whatever photo imaging uh, software you use or prefer to use. So in this case here, uh, you know, the main thing is the the model in the image. Uh, so I'm not too worried about the aspect ratio that's actually too wide for my e-learning here. So the first thing I'm going to look at is the actual image size. Uh, my rule of thumb is I never really put an image into my e-learning course that's going to be larger than the largest possible height and width of my e-learning course. So this image is 8,700 pixels by 3780 pixels. Uh, that's too large. So the first thing I would typically do, uh, and in both of those other projects cases, my dimensions were 1024 by 627. So the first thing I'll try is 1024 is the width. That's going to be uh, too small because the height is below the 627 I'm going for. So I'll try changing the height to 627, knowing that I can crop a little off the sides. So that's probably the best choice for this particular e-learning project. So I'm going to click on OK. It'll resize the image. I'm just going to bump up the navigator zoom here so I can still see the image here. Um, and at this point here, I typically will go into canvas size and perform a similar step. But again, the remaining width is, is still too wide in this case here. So I can simply type in 1024 
and it will crop out anything extra that I don't need. Now, of course, she's way off to the right hand side of this image. So a good uh, best practice would be to choose an anchor point um, in keeping with the fact that we want to keep as much of her in the frame as possible. So I'm going to select the uh, right hand uh, anchor point here and I'm going to go ahead and click on OK uh, and I'm going to proceed. It's giving me a little warning here that, you know, the current canvas size is going to be, uh, you know, clipped. So I'm going to go ahead and hit pr uh, proceed. That looks pretty good to me. So what I'll do at this point, uh, I will save this image as a new image. Uh, in this case here, uh, I'll keep it the same name. I'll just put a B after it, just to denote to myself that I've made some modifications. And I'll go ahead and click Save. I can, I can go with probably maximum quality and still get away with that for e-learning. But if you're concerned about making your e-learning course, uh, you know, ideal for mobile or or over the uh, World Wide Web for people on smartphones. Uh, maybe medium is a better choice. You'll still get a very good quality image, but you're going to reduce the amount of data that your users are going to use by keeping things nice and small. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK, and uh, I can now minimize Photoshop and return to Captivate at this point here. Let's delete, uh, we'll start with the responsive design project here. Let's delete that original image from the library. And we'll select our parent fluid box at this point here and choose fill. And this time we'll import uh, the new version of that image in. And we'll click on open. That looks pretty good here. Uh, let's do the same thing for the non-responsive design version. We'll go in and we'll delete that image again, the original one. And this time we'll use the media icon on our toolbar and select image. And we'll choose the new modified image and click on open and there we have it. So let's go back to the responsive design project. You can see here in our library, the new photo is only 73 kilobytes in size. When you compare that to the original size image, that is a, a huge reduction. And it still, as you can see here, still looks great. If I go out even 150, yeah, there might be a little bit of anti-aliasing around the, the hat and so on, but this is still a fantastic looking image. Uh, and again, with the non-responsive design, same thing, 73.58 kilobytes in size, uh, but also will look fantastic, uh, you know, in your e-learning course. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com, follow me on Twitter at CaptivateTeacher, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.